Hi everybody and welcome. I'm certainly glad you could join me today. In this video, we're going to look at how to create a number of soft boxes. Soft boxes are another light source that is commonly favored by professional photographers as it gives a really nice soft lighting. Before I get started, thank you all so much for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. It really helps me out to know how many people want to see my content. Also a big thank you to all of my patrons. Your support means just so much to me. Like our previous videos, we need to make sure that our scene settings are correct first. So we're gonna go into our render settings and environment, and we're going to switch from dome and scene to scene only, and we're going to turn off draw ground. Then we're gonna minimize that pane so that we can work with a nice big window. Soft boxes come in various different shapes and sizes, often in long rectangular shapes or sometimes in giant octagonal shapes. So I'm going to show you very quickly how to create a giant octobox and a strip light and the rest of it should be fairly easy to handle after that. So in order to create our giant octobox, what we need to do is start off clicking on the create new primitive button, which is the icon at the top that looks like three shapes squished together and we're going to create ourselves a cylinder. Then we're going to set the length to one meter and the diameter is going to also be one meter. Then we're going to hit accept. Now here we are in our geometry editor. Now theoretically we could just set the vertical size to very, very small and just make one of the sides, one of the faces a light source but that would add an unnecessary amount of geometry to our scene. We really only need one of the top faces. So that's all we're going to use. So we're going to make sure that our cylinder is selected in our scene. And we're going to open the geometry editor tool. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our selection type to polygon selection and our selection mode to marquee selection. And we're just going to select the bottom face for now. And then we're going to right click on our shape and we're going to select invert selection. Now that all of the rest of the object is selected, we're going to right click and we're going to go to geometry editing, delete selected polygons. Then we're going to hit yes. And now all we've got is an upside down cylinder. This is what we're after. So now we're going to make sure that we've still got our cylinder selected and we're going to open the surfaces tab and we're going to change our emission property and we're going to turn on emission like so. And we're going to turn it from a two-sided light to a one-sided light like so. Now, unlike our previous tutorials where the objects had a certain shape, so it mattered which way we rotated. Actually, in this case, it doesn't matter because it's completely flat. So either side could be the facing front or back. So all we need to do is go into NVIDIA iRay mode, figure out which face is doing which job. And we can switch to KCDMR2 to make sure that we get it right. So we can see that the bottom face is the one that's lit up. So if we change to our move tool and we go to our parameters tab, and this time we're going to turn in the positive direction in the X rotate, and we're going to change that to 90. Now, if we rotate our camera, you can see that we have a soft box or a giant octobox facing in that direction. So we're gonna go back into texture shaded mode. We're going to reset our camera, and then we're going to drag this back just a fraction along the X axis, like one centimeter. There we go. That's just to make sure that the light source isn't obstructing the view of the camera when we pin it to a camera, which is what we're about to do. So we can leave that a named cylinder. It doesn't matter. We're not going to see it in the scene anyway. And we're going to create a camera by clicking on the camera icon in the top left hand side of the screen. And we're just going to hit accept. Now we're going to set all of these values to zero. Like so. And then we're going to simply parent the cylinder into the camera and then change the name of the camera to giant octo like so then when we jump into our giant octo camera 
we should still be able to see everything in the scene like so. And if we were to move this over to one side and then just park it that way and go back into our perspective view, we can see we've got a giant Octobox ready to use in our scenes. Nice and easy. Now the same process we can use for creating strip lights and regular rectangle soft boxes simply by changing from cylinder and you're going to create a plane like so. And then you can create one thusly and then all you have to do is select your plane and you can change the scales on the X and Z axis. So for a strip light, you'd probably want to do that. Or for a regular rectangle octobox, you'd probably want to do that. And then simply change the surface properties so that they were also luminance. So we're going to create a quick strip light here. We're going to just make that nice and small. And then we're going to rotate it on the X axis. So we're just going to create that 90 degrees. Then we're going to change the surface of that so that it's also a light emitter, like so. Change that to KCDMR2, turn off two-sided lighting. Quickly going to NVIDIA RMO so that we can see which side is which. So ours is actually flipped backwards. So we're gonna go back into texture shaded mode and we're gonna change the 90. We're gonna change that to minus 90, like so. And then when we go into NVIDIA IRO mode again, you can see that side is no longer our light source. That side is going to come back into texture shaded mode. It's always a good habit to come out of NVIDIA IRO mode. Even if you're doing something really simple, it's a good idea to come out of NVIDIA IRO mode just while you're making changes and adjustments because it makes the computer less have to work a lot less hard. So we're now going to move this one along the Z axis as well by one centimeter. Going to add our camera, going to apply default settings. And we're going to zero all these values. Like so. We're going to parent the plane to the camera and then we're going to call this one a strip light. Like so. And now when we go into our strip light object, as you can see, the view of the camera is not obstructed. So I'm going to very quickly set up a scene here using a combination of these two lights and show you how effective this lighting source can be. So here we have a sneaky little scene set up with a whole bunch of reflectors there and light sources that I've made. As you can see, I've rotated one of them 90 degrees so that it's creating a nice cat's light for the eyes. But essentially that's what it is. So if we go into our camera, you can see that we're just looking underneath that light. And if we were to jump into NVIDIA iRay mode, ignoring the poke through on the hairstyle, you can see that it creates this really nice kind of well exposed shot. The catch light in the eyes makes the eyes look really pretty and overall just a really great light source and light setup. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.